Another question about steam. What's the advantage of changing the flow rate on the steam? So the flow rate on the steam is related to a discovery we made about steam. And let me explain this for a little bit. So our steam heater looks more or less like this, a little bit taller, and it has a stainless steel tube, 1.2 meters of it, coiled with a heating element coiled around it. Now we cranked it up to 160 Celsius. You put water in and it flashes the steam and comes out. Now you would think that if you increase the flow rate on that, that you would cool the heater down or end up with wetter steam. But that's actually not what happens. The insight we got with a lot of R&D is that as you increase the flow rate, you also increase the pressure. Okay, let me explain why. Because as water goes in, it flashes the steam and it might go in and flash the steam here. And when it flashes the steam here, all this hot surface gets not used because as soon as it flashes the steam, it rushes out. So you actually want to time your flow rate so that the water is getting hotter, 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 hotter and flashes the steam kind of at the end. When it hits the end there, it flashes the steam. There's not much water around. The steam is very dry. Early on, that's not the case. Now, there's a virtuous circle that happens, which is the hotter you can get that steam to go here before it flashes, the more the pressure increases. And the more the pressure increases, the more the boiling point increases. And the more the boiling point increases, the further you can push the water before it flashes the steam. So follow me here. Increase the flow rate, increases the boiling point, increases the pressure, increases the energy transfer. Okay, until a point where that doesn't happen anymore because now you've gone beyond the heater. So <clears throat> that was a huge revelation for us. And that's the reason that our steam times went down 20, 30% with the new firmware is that we changed control models completely to one that is purely flow controlled as opposed to being pressure controlled. And by getting the flow at a point where the pressure is as high as you can tolerate it, you're getting the driest, most energy transfer steam that you can get. So if you go to 1.2 mils per second flow rate and you like the steam you're getting, it's very dry, then great. But if your steam is quite wet at that flow rate, it means that the water is not flashing steam. You're pushing too much water in more than the steam heater can cope with, in which case drop to 1.0 mils per second. Um, with this steam wand, I've been doing 1.0 uh, per second, 1.0 mils per second, and just watch the timer, see if it changes at all. Now, what I found with me is that I was 32 seconds to heat a um, 150 mil latte to um, 60 Celsius. And I got that timing, 32 seconds, whether I was at one mil per second or 1.2 mils per second, same exact time. So what that tells me is that the faster flow rate, I have more, more dilution, right? So I'm putting more water in to achieve the same temperature in the same time. Well, I don't want water in my coffee. I want milk in my coffee, coffee in my coffee, not water. So that's how you want to dial that in, is essentially if you want to start at the highest flow rate and then just dial it back until your timings start to increase again. And now you've found the optimal one. Now, I'm sorry, we can't do this for you automatically because it just depends on too many factors, not least of which is the exact amperage that you have at your house, your your voltage and amperage, um, and 220 versus 110, uh, but also the water content, mineral content, your altitude, there's a lot of variables. So we take a best guess, it seems to work for most people, but you might be able to fine tune it in a bit more. I will also mention that when you say 0 0.8, 10, 12, those are hints to the firmware, it may or may not do them. It is not absolute control. 